Steam early access and survival. Hey, whoa, stop, hey, whoa, 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 stop, what the fuck? Stop the, stop you can't the come preview. in here. Stop it, stop, stop, stop. And just who the fuck are you meant to be? Okay, come on, calm down, calm down. I'm the ghost of journalistic integrity. Journalistic integrity? You know you're not welcome on the internet, right? Yeah, ha ha, very funny. Look, Subnautica's been updated pretty heavily since you recorded this. It looks way better now and the experimental build's been updated all the time. Look, I get it, a lot of your points are still very valid. Well, in fact, most of them are. But I think these guys deserve to know that it's been updated. Don't you? Yeah, look, all right, that's fine. Fair point. I'll just, I'll, I'll start over and let people draw their own conclusions. Steam early access in survival games is a recipe for absolute fucking disaster. Have we taken a look at the green light queue and early access sections lately? It's a wash with literally dozens of games that will never be finished. Take a look at when I last played DayZ. This game essentially started the whole thing is arguably one of the better titles in the category, but it still barely managed to keep my attention. And now we have Subnautica, which is brought to us by the same chaps that gave us natural selection, so they at least have a bit of a clue about crafting alien environments. Basics of the story, humans are off doing their colonisation thing when your ship, the frankly huge Aurora, is hit by a mysterious energy pulse, causing it to crash. And you are the sole survivor, out of a crew of possibly hundreds. What were you doing? Polishing the fucking ladder on the escape pod when it all happened? Serious question though, why the fuck are we trying to colonise a world that's about 90% water? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but fuck it. I'll go and make a space tiki bar for the good of mankind. Sorry, I've got a bit of a thing about making tiki bars in survival games. The premise of Subnautica is basically the same as every other survival game out there. Collect, build, research, survive, and that's about it. You've got all sorts of mad technologies to be getting on with, but a lot of it just doesn't make sense. We've got dark matter reactors and a device that's basically a digital alchemist, but Space Bastards Incorporated couldn't put a knife, food, water, and a radio in their escape pod? No, no, you've, you've just given me some late game materials. Cheers. The oceans of Planet Tiki are teeming with life both flora and fauna, but the developers here have made a bit of a design decision that's not really common in the survival genre. Colour, everywhere. They've made everything colourful. I love it. The creatures are curious and intimidating. The tools and base components look just futury enough to claim to be sci-fi and the animations and particle effects are on point. Great. One thing about base building has annoyed me though. As you can see, Tiki Base Alpha is constructed at a depth that is nowhere near crush depth. I could make my base entirely out of iPhone screens and it wouldn't be crushed by the weight of the water. Instead, every now and then I get a giant yawning hole in my base that's made from titanium. Fucking titanium! In what universe is titanium weak as fuck? Look, I get it, realism might not be always on the cards, but come on, we all know titanium's strong. The inventory system needs a little work and so does the crafting. It's a little convoluted and awkward to click through. The research system is again one of the things that doesn't make sense when it comes to the context of the whole thing. Surely if I've got a device that can use raw materials and pretty much laser things into existence, I must have some kind of space Wikipedia with all these schematics in. I know there has to be a challenge to getting some late game items, but I think it needs to be within the context of the technology on offer. Instead of just building a vehicle maker device, why not have the vehicle schematics available? instead of having to gather fragments to analyse. There are vehicles to be made, depths to be explored, but there isn't much of a hint of an end game. But then again, we're quite early on in the development cycle and I'm quite willing to forgive that due to the frequency of the updates. The problem the developers have made for themselves is how the game begins. Do they plan for there to be another intelligence on the planet? One that's capable of shooting down something from orbit? Or is this just going to be left out as development goes on? And that's the real problem I find with early access. It's easy to get bored of a game that isn't complete. I've not gone back to DayZ despite the amount of hours I put into the mod and all its variants, and Subnautica deserves so much more than that in my opinion. It takes the survival genre and gives it a new, unfamiliar setting, in a genre that's been gnawed to death by zombies, ravaged by the generic apocalypse so many times that there's just about nothing that hasn't been done before. Subnautica is in decent shape right now. It's playable, fun, and good looking. There's an active and friendly community behind it that continually shows support to the devs. In the quagmire of survival games out there, Subnautica Nautica is an example that surviving doesn't have to mean the end of the world. It can be a whole new one for you to explore.